punch hole, so I zero all my counters at that point, and the first thing I will do is check that I'm in focus. So the one thing that I can't control from the desk is the focus, so that's a knob on the front of the gate, there it is, okay, so we're in focus. Okay, well here we are, I'm looking at the first images on the film, so I'm just sort of seeing what settings I need to start with on my grading controls, to, which will be dependent on things like the lighting at the time, the type of film stock that was, was used by eye and experience, adjusting the controls here so that our friend on the screen looks a reasonably neutral sort of colour. So I have controls knob controls for master gamma, which is the response of the machine between black and white. This is color lift. I'm just arbitrarily using the, this boosts the, the setting I have boosts the magenta cast in the low lights. Now I don't really want any of that, so I'll turn it off. I can make the whole scene black and white if I want. I can adjust the total saturation. So I can overcook it a bit for that sort of slightly garish Technicolor look. Now, the BBC, through experimentation in the early days of colour, came to the conclusion that for the most convenient arrangement of adjustments, um, for colour correction live on air, as it was at the time, was to have two joysticks and the left-hand one, the knob on the top adjusts the lift, which is the black level in the picture, and the movement adjusts the colour gamma, which, strictly speaking, is the mid-tone colour balance, but that has the most effect on a picture and the look of a picture, rather than colour lift, which has less effect and doesn't generally need adjustment between scenes. And the right-hand joystick is all to do with the highlights, the whites, the gain. So turning the knob on the top alters the master gain, so I can completely overdrive things or turn it down and moving the stick around affects the colour balance in primarily the highlight areas of the scene. So, having got an idea of what I'm faced with here, I shall rewind the film to the start of this scene. And we run it through largely in, in real time, and I'll put cues in the grading computer at the uh, appropriate places. But the beauty of one of these Mark III type telecines over its predecessors is that it will fast wind back and forth rather like a tape recorder. The predecessors, the twin lens type telecines, um, because of their mechanical and, and optical mechanisms, could only um, run at real time forwards and backwards. So for the sort of activity that we now call post-production, it was quite a drawback because obviously if you wanted to just take a clip from 10 minutes into a 30 minute film, you had to wait 10 minutes to get there. Whereas with one of these type of machines, it fast winds down in a matter of moments at about 10 times real time speed. Ah, this looks very fine actually. It um, appears well exposed. I'm not having to put any um, extreme corrections in. It's nice and steady and it's nice and clean. So um, this is good. There we are, bong, change of scene. Now, unfortunately, this gentleman has been shot out of focus by the original crew. So um, there's not much I can do about that. Out of focus is out of focus. Otherwise, his exposure is fine, but he's out of focus. Oh, there's a change of scene here. This is very different exposure. The highlights, the sky behind our friend here, is very bright and is very dense on the film. So what I can do here, just to even the look of the images out, is put a dynamic change in my grading system. A dynamic change is where I ask the grading computer to put a, a, a transition, a change between two grading settings over a period of time, between two cues. A gradual change to perhaps compensate for a camera movement or a gradual change in lighting on location, which might be unavoidable as the sun goes in and out behind clouds, something along those lines. So if I get this right, 
you're not aware of the change happening because it's the sort of thing your eyes would naturally do, looking around from a darker, shadowy scene to, to a highlight. The noises you can hear, the bongs you can hear, are made by the Digigrade grading computer. When it was developed back in the 1980s, uh, it was said to be one of the most vocal devices around. At the time, most electronic devices probably made just beeps if they made any kind of noise at all. Right, I think we're coming to the end of the film now from the, the look of it on the, on the machine. and. There we are, that is the very end. There's a punch hole just gone through, so that would be in the labs marked, but that is the end of, of the film. So my settings are stored in the computer's memory. We have 17 cues in the whole film. And from start to finish, it runs for 8 minutes and 14 seconds and 3 frames. Now for long-term storage, I can copy the, the the, the, the cues, the grading file information to a floppy disk. Now remember this is 1980s technology, so a floppy disk was the, the height of sophistication in those days. Right, what I, what I shall do now is rewind the film. And then, all being well, we are ready to go for a, uh, a take, a recording. Now we sit back and think, what a wonderful piece of work, and doesn't it look good? OK, let me just find my cues and start points. Flip a switch there. We have a device in the, in the equipment bays which interfaces the Telecine machine to the edit controller. And as far as the edit controller is concerned, the Telecine machine appears and behaves like a Beta SP videotape recorder. So that's what the edit controller thinks it's controlling. I have a DigiBeta tape already queued up in the recorder. So all I have to do is press record. And here we go. It all runs up to make a frame accurate edit. And now we can sit back and luxuriate in the results. The object being to deliver on tape a complete, unbroken recording of the film. We have two monitors in, in front of us. Uh, the left-hand one is showing me the output of the Telecine machine, and the right-hand one is a confidence replay, if you will, from the DigiBeta recorder, so that I can check that I am actually recording what I think I'm recording. Uh, and the black and white monitor on top is the character's display from the video recorder. Above the left-hand monitor is a, uh, a waveform scope which is showing me the red, the green and the blue components as they come out of the Telecine. So that, that is a guide to me for the grading process and it helps me to ensure that the, um, the colours are neutral and natural and I'm not clipping any low lights or highlights. To my right here is the character display from the edit controller. So on there I can see the cues that I've put in for the, uh, the edit points and um, the progress of, of the operation, whether I'm in assemble edit or insert and video and audio and so forth. And here we are, we're coming up to the end of the piece, so I'll just wait for the last punch hole to go through, which there it is, and we are done. Now, what I would like to do is just to have a second stab at the scene in the middle, which is against the very bright sky. Well, I'm going to do an insert video edit over this piece that I've already recorded, so I'm going to replace it with a new take. Because I can drive the Telecine machine from the edit controller, I can do frame accurate edits of this kind. I'm going to make an adjustment inside the Telecine machine to try and give me a little bit more range in the colour gain because the, the scene has this rather unnaturally green look to the sky. So I'm just going to make an adjustment down here, which is the master photo cell gain, like that.
and there we are, we've achieved the sky looks more skylike and our friend in the foreground looks reasonably neutral and when we get to the end of the scene it will go bong as it stored the new settings return control to the edit controller press edit and it will drop in these corrected scenes back over the the first take on the tape but this this particular scene now looks much more natural right so there we have that so I just review that the edits have worked in the right place and we'll put a little bit of black on the end just beneath this and then my work here is done <laughs>